Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start graphing linear equations. There are several ways of graphing linear equations, and one way is by plotting points. Now, we had these actual uh, amount of times and a person's actual Fahrenheit temperature, and a linear equation or linear model that can approximate these data points is this right here, F equals 0.36T plus 99, where T is the amount of time that's passed by, and uh, F is the person's Fahrenheit temperature. Now, when I substitute in values into uh, T, I will get values out for F. Like, for example, if I substitute 0 in for T, 0.36 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 99 is 99. So I don't get the exact answer here for the actual temperature, but I should get an answer that's close to the actual answer if, it, if this is a good equation here, good model that models this situation. So these are the actual, and we're going to use this model here to uh, see what this, how good this model is in terms of graphing uh, these, uh, this relationship between time and a person's Fahrenheit temperature. So I'm going to use these same points here to substitute into here to get out the predicted y values, which is the person's Fahrenheit temperature, and then I'm going to graph that line. I know this is a linear equation because everything's to the first power, and the first four letters of the word linear spell the word line. So the graph is just the line. And so really, you only need about two points, but if you have a couple extra, that doesn't hurt any. So uh, let's go and graph this thing. Uh, here's my equation, f equals 0.36t plus 99. And here's the values I'm going to substitute in. And like I said, when I substitute 0 in for t, well, uh, 0 times uh, anything is 0, and 0 plus 99 is 99. So my first point is this point right here, 0, 99, that I'm going to need to graph. Substitute the 5 in for t, and you might have to work this out. That would be 0 0.36 times 5 plus 99. I'm substituting the 5 in for t. Now, 0 0.36 times 5, we could do that off the side here. Let's see, that's 0.36 times 5, and that will give me, that's uh, 30, carrier 3, 15, 18, and we need to mark off two places, so I get 1.8. Now, that's what the 0.36 times the 5 is. Then i got to add on the 99, and I get... one hundred point eight let's go ahead and plot these two points to start off with one's going to be at zero ninety nine well here's zero on the x-axis see this is uh... positive values on the x-axis we'll just go five and ten here but this would be zero on the x-axis and we need to go up to ninety nine so i tell you what let's just start this graph again like at ninety eight ninety nine a hundred 101 and, and so on as far as we need. 0, 0.99 would be this point right here then. And the next point, 5, 100.8 would be over 5, up 100.8. So right about here. And let's get one more point. We'll substitute the 10 in for t, and that would be uh, 0.36 times 10. Well, that's just going to give us 3.6. It's just going to move the decimal point over 1. Add on the 99 and you get 102.6. So at 10, we're going to need to go a little higher than this. It's, let me just draw this up here a little higher. 102, and then 102.6 is even up higher. So at 10, it will be up to 102.6. That's really up there pretty high. Now, this thing will make a perfect straight line uh, if I uh, drew all my points exactly right and had it scaled, you know, perfect type of thing. And uh, that's as good as I can do, and that's pretty much a straight line. Now, this line, the graph of this line goes on forever. So I put little arrows on this, meaning that it goes on forever. Uh, the truth is, is that after a certain amount of time, if that person's body temperature keeps on rising, uh, they won't make it any longer. They're going to die from hyperthermia. And we have no idea to know what their temperature was before they started experiencing hyperthermia. So there's a certain range in which this model makes sense. And after you go out of that, it doesn't make too much sense. But graphing linear equations is just a matter of plotting points. Like this last point was 102.6 was the y value. 
and this is the x value. Each one of these is a point. So there's three points here, and since it's right in, to, we evaluated right in this linear equation, we'll get three points on a line. Let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, on this problem, it gives you a linear equation here that gives you a, a model for the relationship between the uh, percent saturation of hemoglobin and the uh, your PO2 level. And it's just H, which stands for your percent uh, predicted hemoglobin level, is equal to 2 times P, that's your PO2 level, minus 6. So this is just a little linear equation. Now, this is the actual hemoglobin level for these PO2 levels, and these predicted uh, hemoglobin levels based on this equation uh, won't be the exact values, but they should uh, be close to that if it's a good model. And they're, they're not always close. But for example, to do this, we'll substitute uh, whatever numbers they give you here to put in for x or p as it is on this problem. So substitute 20 in for P, and that'd be 2 times 20 is 40, 40 minus 6 is 34. So then we would plot the point 20, 34, and we would do the same for all these values. So let's go ahead and do that a second. So here's my equation, substituting 20 in here, 2 times 20 is 40, 40 minus 6 is 34. And you would just do that the whole time. 40 in here, 40 times 2 is 80, 80 minus 6 is 74. 60 in here gives me 2 times 60 is 120 minus 6 is 114. 80 times 2 is 160 minus 6 is 154. 100 in here is uh, 100 times 2 is 200 minus 6 is 194. Now a good point to plot, it didn't ask you to, but it's worth it to do it, is put 0 in for the P right here. Now this is playing the role of your X variable and this is playing the role of the Y variable right here. This is like your x, this is your, like your y. So if you put 0 in for p, we get 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 6 is minus 6. And I know you can't have a percent saturation of hemoglobin of uh, negative 6, but it, at, this is actually considered your y-intercept. This is the point that it's going to hit the y-axis. So there's a point down here at 0, negative 6 that, the, uh, that it hits. Now I'm looking at these uh, uh, x values, and I have them here. And I'm looking at these y values, and I need to make sure my graph can show all these. That goes basically clear up to 200. So I'm just going to go by units of, uh, let's go 20s here, like uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 40, 60. Let's, see, let's put some of these in here, 160, 180. Here's 200. Down here would be negative 20. And so on over here would be negative x-axis. And we just plot these points. Here's the first point, 20, 34. So we go over 20 on the x-axis, up 34. Well, here's 20 and here's 40. So 34 is in between here, maybe a little closer to 40. The next one's 40, 74. Go over to 40, up 74. Here was 80. Here was 60. So 40, 74 would be right about here. Then... Uh, the next point would be at 60, 114, 60, 114, and uh, you could keep on graphing these, and they should make a line if I did everything neatly. The next point like, would be 80, 154, go over 80, up to a height of 154 up here. Well, here's 140, 154 is going to be just a little bit above that spot, somewhere about here. This point here, let's go to this one, 0, negative 6 means 0 on the x-axis, negative 6 on the y-axis. So that would be about there. So the graph of this thing would look something like this. And this is the graph of that linear equation right here. And that's it graphed. And uh, we'll pick up on the next video with other graphing methods.